Okay, you can see I'm in a new database here by, well, looking up here on the title bar, I've got my table data database. And down below in the navigation pane, you can see the list of data that I want to keep track of. That is, broken down into their smallest, most meaningful tables. For example, I've got my employees table, and i got the fields in there to keep track of my employees, like their first name, their last name, street address, customer fields, and so on. In any case, I'm going to use this database to talk about and show you what a one-to-one -one relationship looks like. And as you recall in the previous training video, when it came to creating a relationship, you come up here and you'll click on the Database Tools tab, go to the Relationships group, and click on Relationships. It's the same window here that we can go ahead and create, view, or edit our relationships. I've got three tables here with two different types of relationships. I have more tables, but these three tables will be sufficient for this example here. So over here, I have the customer ID and the customer name. Now, the customer name is actually the company's name. I could have called it the company name. Let's say we have a huge customer, Fox News. Now, when it comes to billing Fox News, I could go ahead and mail off an invoice to them and put attention billing department, but I get a better response or probably a quicker one if I could go ahead and find that one contact person to keep track of over there to send the bill to. You know, their contact last name and first name, also an account number, the first order that they made. Now, do I want just one contact person or many? I just want one. But to create many, I'd go ahead and instead of duplicating the primary key field and adding a primary key to that same field over here in the billing information table, I would put it down here. And of course, don't assign it the primary key. So when I link them up, it would be a one customer to many contacts I have over at Fox News. I don't want to do that. So what I did is I created a field over here and made sure that it had the same data type. And when I enter in records, the same type of data and named it the same name as the primary key field that I wanted to link up to in this table here. Not only that, but when it comes to creating reports, like let's say I have a meeting and my boss wants to know um, all the companies that we've sold to, let's say in the state of Utah, I just need these two fields here. I just need to pull up this information. I don't have to pull up all the uh, billing information, do I? If I did, it would slow my network down or my computer, so that's why I broke them down here. Now, having said that, a one-to-one -one relationship is pretty simple. You just click and drag from primary key to primary key, right? But what's interesting is, is like a one-to-many relationship, as I mentioned, whenever I update a record here or delete it in the one table, then over in the uh, table that's related to the many, it has to accept all those changes. But any changes I make here is not going to update the uh, customer ID over here in the customer table because this is where we create the customer IDs, not in this table. This one just accepts whatever this table has. And it works the same way in a one-to-one -one relationship, but how do we know which one? There's no dancing clown or somebody that comes out and says, hey, I'm the weak one. In other words, metaphorically speaking, when I click and drag the customer ID from this table over onto the customer ID in that table, I'm extending my hand in this relationship so I control the relationship. Whatever I do automatically updates the records over here. Okay, And this, because they didn't initiate it, whatever they do, doesn't automatically update the records over here. It doesn't update them at all. So that's why it's important when we click and drag which one is extending the relationship. So let me go ahead and select this relationship by clicking on it. And when it turns bold, that means that I can go ahead and either right click on that tiny, tiny thin line and edit, or in this case, delete it, or let me click off, or hit the delete key on the keyboard and click yes. So once it's deleted, I can go ahead and click and drag the customer ID to the customer ID, this one, because I'm dragging it from. Any changes I make will automatically update all the records here. If I drag it from here to here, any changes I make will automatically update all the records over here. So let's go ahead and click and drag from one customer ID to the other and check the boxes to enforce the referential integrity and make sure we can do updates and deletes and click create. Again, the billing information table was the one that I initiated it from. So having said that, let's go ahead and pull up the billing info table, then the customers table, and then also how about the orders? And the reason why I bring up the orders is because when you look at the relationships, if I go ahead and update a record here, this being the weaker one, it's not going to automatically update that one at all. But it will update between this relationship it has with the orders, the one to many, it being the one, all related records tied to that customer ID. So let's go to the billing info, and we got the customer ID 31201. Customers table has 31201. So if I delete it in the billing table, because it's the aggressor, it'll automatically delete it from the customer's table. But if I delete it from the customer's table, when I hover over the uh, row header, you see my pointer, how it turns into a black arrow, and pointing to the right, when I click on it, it selects the whole row. All I have to do is go ahead and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And now because I'm deleting this record, and it has a relationship with the orders table, remember the customer's has a relationship with the orders, it's going to update the related records in that table. Not the billing table, 
because of the two, this one's the one who initiated it. So we say yes, let's go ahead and update that. I go back to the billing table. Do we still have 31201? Yes, we do. It doesn't go back and update that one. But what it did do, it removed its related records, the 31, what is it again? 31201 from the orders table. So if I go ahead and I sort this from smallest to largest, I'm not going to see that uh, customer ID here with any related orders or records, okay? Let me go ahead and close out of the orders table, and I don't want to save the layout where I sorted it from smallest to largest. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and delete the relationship between the two and just flip it really quick. But before I do that, I've got one record in one table, but it's not in another. It's going to say, wait a second, um, you've got one ID in here, not in the other. In any case, let me show you. Go ahead and close out of these tables here. Let's go ahead and select it, delete it. Yes, we want to get rid of it. Instead of from billing info to customers, let's go from customers to billing info. ID to ID, create it, and there we go. Data integrity issues. Well, one record in this table that doesn't match or have a related uh, record in this table here. So what we have to do is we have to go to the customers table, the billing info, and get rid of the billing info record. Delete it. Say yes. And notice when I deleted it, it didn't say I'm updating related records well because it's not related. So now we have matching records in this table with matching records in that one. The customer ID, that is. So we go ahead and close out, close out. Let's quickly create this relationship before the video gets too much longer. And go ahead and go from customer ID, customer ID. Check those, click create. So what I update in one, let me go ahead and open up the customers and double click on the billing. So I have customers, I have billing. Let's go to the customers, 31352. If I delete it from here, it should delete it and update it from the billing table because this is the aggressor. What he does here, the other one has to go along with and accept it. So go ahead and select it, selects the whole record. Come up here, another way to delete it. Home tab to the records group, click on the delete button. And it tells me right there, it says, hey, we're about to delete a related record in another table. Are you okay with this? Click yes. Go to that related table. And it shows you, because I have the table open, that it's been deleted. If I didn't have it open, it would automatically just, when I open it later, wouldn't be there. But if I come up here and I don't want to see that, refresh it, it removes that. There we go. Back to our relationships. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.